title of my message today is Treasures. Treasures. Where's your treasure? Why don't we stand and we'll read the word out of Matthew chapter 6. It says, lay up treasures in heaven. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Dear Heavenly Father, as we talk about our treasures, Lord, I pray that your treasury would be open to us, Lord. That, Lord, if you declared you open the windows of heaven to us, and I, 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 Lord, I'm just reminded that you said you'd send the rain, and I thank you for the rain that we have today, Lord, but I pray that the spiritual rain would fall on us today, and that, Lord, that you would just water the word, water us in the spirit today, Father, that, Lord, that you'd be glorified and lifted up today. We give you praise in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You know... I got a picture up on the screen for you today. This is the RMS Titanic, the unsinkable Titanic. They said it was totally unsinkable, an unsinkable ship, and it set sail on April 10th, 1912, five days before it sank, before it hit an iceberg and ripped a gash in the side of the ship that went down and 1,500 people perished with it. And when they perished, they left behind some treasure. This is one of the rings that they found in the treasure, and this is another ring that they found in the treasure. And, and recently, the treasure was sold. It was put up for auction, and the, the asking price came with a value of $189 million. That's a lot of treasure on one ship that went down in 1912. The point is, is you can't take it with you. The 1,500 people who lost their lives on that maiden voyage lost a lot of treasure that day. It went down with them. I don't know if you heard the story about the husband and wife who were married and and he told her he said when I die I'm going to take it with me I want you to put all my money in my casket with me because I'm going to take my money with me so he passed away and at his funeral she approached the casket and she dropped in a check for the full amount of his money because you can't take it with you. There is no way to get what you have here to be in heaven. Listen, why would you want to take anything of this earth to heaven? There, you do not have enough riches for this life to, to even compare with streets made of gold. Huh? With the emeralds, the jewels, and stuff that will be in heaven. You know, you, the, the idea of taking it with us should flee from us. And not be a part of us. But here in this passage today, we have Jesus, us tell, Jesus telling us not to store up treasure on earth, but in heaven. And I just showed you pictures from the Titanic, and you can still see that ring right there. And how you can't take it with you. It gets left behind. But I think there's a much deeper meaning behind what Jesus is saying. All through this passage, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is trying to take us to a, a deeper understanding of who he is. He's trying to get us to get into a deeper relationship with him. He begins, he, he, you know, he's talked about our attitude. And, and, and it's called the be attitudes. He's like, let your attitude be like this. You know, blessed are this and blessed are that and blessed, blessed, blessed. Because he, he's, he's wanting to adjust our attitude with living. I, I believe he wants us to see how blessed we are. Now let me ask you this. Is there anybody here that has any dollars or change in their pocket with them today? Now, I'm not going to ask for it, so it's okay if you raise your hand. If you've got money with you today, just raise your hand. Okay, you're in the top 10% of the richest people of the world. 
Our homeless people in the community are more blessed than the people of the world. We are blessed in this land, amen? And we need to have that attitude of it. An attitude so much so that we are, we are salt and light to this world. You know, because if it doesn't have the salt, it loses its flavor, amen? Now, I've been trying to get off salt. I've been trying to not eat any salt, no salt. It's almost impossible to not eat salt because salt is in everything. It's in everything. You make noodles, they're made of salt. You eat bread, they're made of salt. I mean, there is so much salt in everything. I asked Alana, I said, can you make me an egg? She says, yeah. And she brings me an egg. And I look at her, I said, did you put salt on it? And she's like, I did. I can't help it. I love it. You know, we're, we're salt people. But in the kingdom, God is saying, be the salt. Be the flavor to the world. Amen? Don't hide your light under a bushel, but let it shine. Take off the bushel. Let it shine. Let people know. Hey, I love Jesus. This is what Jesus has done for me. Be the salt. Be the light. And it talks about fulfilling the law. He says the law is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. The law is good. Thou shalt not kill. We need a little bit more of that right now. Amen? We need a little bit more of thou shalt not kill. We need a little bit more of, of the law at work in our lives to, to, so that we're not sinning. Because the law just represents what? Sin. That's all Jesus was, you know, when he gave us the law, he's just trying to get us to not sin. And then he says, mm, murder, don't, don't commit murder. Now most of us would say, well, that's easy. I'm not going to kill anybody. But Jesus said, okay, let's take it one step further. Do you say, oh, I hate you? Because when you hate somebody, he says that's like committing murder. So, and then adultery. He says, oh, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. Takes it a step further. He says, well, when you lust after somebody, it's like you've committed adultery already. So he, he, divorce? What does God hate? You can say it out loud. What does God hate? He hates divorce. It says that in Malachi. He hates it, okay? So we, we, we don't want to... He's trying to get us to step out of our flesh and more into the Spirit to take on more of the heart of what God is telling us and not just an attitude of it, but that we take it to heart what God is saying. And he says, don't make oaths. Don't make commitments to things that you have no plans of keeping. Amen? Don't make oaths. And then going the second mile. Going the second mile will challenge you. I, I got up at uh, 5 o'clock yesterday morning because Delanda was coming to cook for the men's breakfast. And thank you to all the ladies that came and cooked yesterday. It was a great meal. And we had the men's breakfast. And at 11 we finished. And Delanda and I had to go to the, the, a couple of stores. And send a, we're sending a package to our kids in Kentucky. And then I, I went and I picked up my mom. And I took her to, to lunch. We had a nice lunch. And then I took her to LAX airport. You know, and so I'm on my way back. And by the time I'm hitting Corona, it's already 4 o'clock. Now I've been up since 5. So I've already been up and running for 11 hours. And I'm tired. I was tired yesterday. And, and right when I'm here, I hit Corona, my phone rings. So I say, hey, hello, it's Ron. And, and then it comes to this. Are you the pastor of the church? I'm like, yes, I am. She says, oh, good. She says, you know, I haven't eaten for three days. I am so hungry. Do you think you could get me some food? I said, absolutely. Now, remember, I'm tired. I said, absolutely. I said, where are you at? Where do I bring the food to? She says, I'm at Motel 6. I said, I'll be there in 15 minutes. And it's amazing because, I mean, on Friday, I see all this food. But by Saturday, it's all gone. I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to bring her some salads. And stuff. Valerie gave it all away. I mean, the cupboards were bare. There was some food in there that she had for somebody. I said, well, they didn't get it. So I took their food. Now I know that person's got a job, so I know he ain't going hungry. And I, I drove down here to that lady, and I gave her that food. And, I, and, I, and then she said, you know, and, I, and she, she's in an um, abusive relationship, and she's going to a shelter for abused women. And um, so I, I said, let me pray for you. And she allowed me to pray for her and stuff. And, you know, it's just when you go the extra mile, it's going to cost you something.
Amen? It means you've got to go out of your way. And sometimes it's not always fun. But, you know, I think, you know, when it talks about giving, it says give with a joyful heart. You know, give with gladness. And, you know, and I, was, I was excited that I could come to the church and grab some food and take it to that lady. I wasn't like, oh, God, I'm so tired. I just want to go home. Leave me alone. No, I don't have any food. You know, I, that would have been easy. No, I don't have anything. You know, <laughs> that would have been easy to do, you know. But my spirit said, help. Man, so, you know, it, it brings a joy. When you find joy in, in going the second mile, that's the thing. Because remember with that message on going the second mile, a Roman would find a, a Christian because the Christian would go the, second mi- the first mile because a Roman soldier could come and say, carry my gear for a mile. And so the average person would have to stop, the Jew would have to stop doing, and they would carry their gear for a mile, then they would throw it down, be mad, and then they'd walk their mile back. But not a Christian. A Christian would say, okay, I'm going to go the second mile. Because the first mile you got to do. But the second mile you do it is under the Lord. And the second mile gives you an open opportunity to begin to share the gospel with people. When you go in that second mile and they're like, why are you doing this? Because Jesus loves you. And that's why I want to do it for you. Because Jesus loves you. And I'm here today to tell you. I told you about the guy that went to Iran. His name's Dan Bauman. You can find him on Facebook. He went to Iran to minister... And he got caught ministering in Iran, and they put him in jail. And then when they brought him before the judge, the judge said, What are you doing here? Are you a spy? He said, No, I believe that God has sent me here to tell you about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he did, and he got released. Going the extra mile... Going the second mile will cost you something. But Jesus is tugging on our heart. Go the second mile. Stretch yourself a little bit. In in first service, there's a lady that just started coming to the church. Just, Just started coming. But you know what? She serves more than anybody in the church. And she has been serving more than anybody in this church. She comes every day to help with the food ministry. To help Valerie sort the food. To help Valerie give out the food. She just comes and bees apart. And now, she's been coming and serving so long that Valerie said, hey, maybe you got to come to church. So now she's starting to come to church. I said, Somebody that doesn't come to church. And, and then there's a guy that helps her that goes to the Coptic church over here in Norco. Doesn't even come to our church. And he goes with her. And he finds great joy in going the second mile. And that's what we, we need to do as a body. We've got to find the joy in going the extra mile. The joy in serving and giving to the Lord and helping others. Amen. There's got to be something in us that says, you know what? I'm going to stretch myself You know, maybe you can't stretch yourself every day, but you can stretch yourself one day, amen? You can stretch yourself to step out and say, Hey, Valerie, what do you need? I'll be there and I'll help you. Go the extra mile. And then he says, love your enemies, man. It's easy to love people that love. I find it easy to love you guys because I know you love me. It makes it great. You know, but when I'm out on the streets and I find people that don't really care about me, that's when it gets fun. You know, that's when it's great. When you love them, they're like, why are you doing this? Because I love you. Well, how do you love me? You don't know anything about me. Because I know that God loves you, and I'm his son, so I love you. Man, that, I love to blow people away like that, Dan. Just love them. To go that extra mile. Take a lady some groceries down, down the street that just, like, I've been hungry for three days. I've never been so hungry in my life. I'm like, man, you know what? We got too much food in America for anybody to be hungry. Amen. We have too much food coming through this church. One day, Valerie got 169 pizzas. That is a lot of food. A lot of food. And then, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to please God. How do you do good to please God? 
I'm only telling you the story about that lady just so you understand that it's, it's, it's easy, it can be easy to go the second mile. I'm not telling you so you go, oh wow, Pastor Ron, that's great. I, I don't care what, I just want to serve God. I want to glorify God. I want to do good to please God. Amen? That's what it's about. And that's what he's calling us. Do good to please me. And then he, he tells us how to pray. Are you praying just so, to, so people can notice you? Or are you praying to touch the heart of God? See, I, I went on a little bit of bit of a, a wave of, about prayer because prayer is so important and right now it's just people are really pressing into the Lord and then the heart of fasting God really wants us to fast he really wants us to fast but learn how to do it learn how to do it join with us let's do it in unity if you can on Tuesday night man go without a meal see and, and, and Jesus said hey don't do it so that everybody knows you're doing it in the sense that you know don't go around going oh I'm so hungry oh man come on when the pastor said no one should go without food let's be no no I'm okay I'm fasting no, don't do it like that man do it like come and look good and serve some food amen because that's what it talks about in Malachi this I mean in Isaiah 58 he said uh, you know Take the meal that you were going to have and give it to somebody. Come down here, man, and fast and pray and seek his face, but then give, give food away. Help. Amen? So the heart of fasting. And now he takes us into to treasure. And leading up to today, he keeps saying in this passage of the Sermon on the Mount, he said, you have heard it said. It's like, these are things you should know about God. What I just talked to you about. You should know these things. But when Jesus came, he came to take us to a deeper place with him. A place of the heart. Not just actions, but our heart would be wholly surrendered to him. Now we do a lot to store up for our flesh. We like comfort. I'm asking you to do things that are uncomfortable. Fasting can be uncomfortable. You know, I'm asking you to go the extra mile. But I, I'm not asking you. The Word of God asks you to do this. And it, it, it's, it's, we like comfort. We like to be content in all things. When, when things, listen, when we're not content, what are we? We're in contention. And we don't like to be in contention. We like content lifestyle. That, you know, but listen, without faith... It's impossible to please God. So in what you're doing, the way you're living, does it take faith? Or are you just going with what you can do and not with what God's calling you to? Because that's where the difference is. That's when God really starts moving in your life. And we like things our way. When, when you're challenged to do things differently, that's when we, our flesh creeps out. That's when you, you notice whether Jack's in the box or not, you know? You know, you turn that little thing, that little crank, and if Jack pops out of the box, it's like, uh-oh. You know, and that's sometimes when we don't get things our own way. Jack will pop out of the box, and you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> like, I have no idea. You know, but when the Jack pops out of the box, that's God's way of saying, I want to deal with this. I want to, I want to get this out of you. Somebody, uh, told me earlier, he said, man, you know, Pastor, I'm fasting. You know, because this person told me, he said, I say things sometimes that are, that are not good. And I just apologize when I do it. I apologize to the Lord. I just say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. The person said, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be active towards getting that out of my life. I'm going to fast with you. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that out of my life. I'm going to pray that my tongue would change. Amen? See, because that's, we could just continue going along, or we could really step into what does God want to do. Amen? But when we want things our way, it makes it tough for God to intervene and have his way in us. So with Jesus sitting on the side of this mountain, he's trying to take us to a deeper place in our relationship with him. He makes a statement, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. So the main question for today would be, where is your treasure? What has captured you? Because where your treasure is, 
there your heart is also. So it's really important for you to discover where your treasure is. Because we can store up treasure here in this earth which can be taken from us. Which can be stolen. You know, and I've, 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 I've talked to a number of people about treasure. And the, the number one treasure that I've heard is my kids and my grandkids. That's my treasure. Well, I love my kids. I love my grandkids probably even more. <laughs> but they're not my treasure. They're not my treasure. See, because a treasure, an earthly treasure, is something that can be taken from you. A heavenly treasure is something that's forever. When you store up treasures in heaven, so the best thing I could do, Pastor Jesse, for my grandsons is lead them all to Jesus. Amen? So that they begin, they're, they're in heaven. Amen? We know that someday they're going to go to heaven. They're going to be with Jesus. That's the best thing I can ever do for my grandkids is lead them to Jesus. Amen? That's the best thing you could do for your kids is lead them to Jesus. Where, what is your treasure? I think Jesus wants to be our treasure. He wants to be the focus of our lives. And that we're storing up things in heaven and not just on earth. So today I wanna, I'm going to go real quick about a few things that we treasure. Number one, we treasure money. The treasure of money. Now, Jesus never said that money was evil, amen? Money is not evil. How many of you know it takes money to make this world go round? You know, we all got to well work, make money, or we're or we retired. How many of you are retired in here? Retired, okay. Praise God for retired. And, and uh, it's good to be retired. And how many of you know it's good to be retired and have some money? I, I don't want to retire someday and then not be able to go out of the house because I don't have any money. You know, I, want to, you know, I, I do want to store up for my retirement that I, I can um, at least eat when I get old, you know. <laughs> but the treasure of money, the love of money is what makes it evil. Now, it's when money takes the priority over Jesus that we begin to have an issue of in, in this life. But listen, not, I'm not going to talk about just giving to God because I think that giving your tithes and offerings should be a given already. The Word declares that we're, we're to give to the Lord 10% of our income. That should be a, a given, okay? So I, I'm not even going to talk about that. But what I am going to talk about is when it's when in, within your capacity to help somebody, the Word says you should do it. Amen? It's just like that lady calling yesterday. It would have been really easy to say, you know what, you got the wrong number <laughs> and hang up. But it was within my capacity to say, you know what? I said, you know what? I'm getting off the freeway right now at Lincoln. I'm going to the church right now. It's right here. I can do this. It's within my capacity. If it's within your capacity to do it, to help someone, you should do it. Amen? And you might say, well, I don't have the money to do it. Man, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, most of the time it doesn't take a lot of money. Most of the time, and I didn't make this a point, but I probably should have. Our most precious thing in this life to us is our time. What are you putting your time to? Because then you'll find your treasure. What are you putting your time to? I was thinking about that this morning. I thought, man, I should have put that in my sermon. Because where your time is, Abe, that's where your treasure, you're, you're going. What you're investing all your energy in. You know, and uh, it, that makes it, uh, you know, that should paint a picture for you of where your treasure is today. Jesus, he gave all he had. But yet, he was, he was not in lack. Whose clothes were they gambling for when Jesus was on the cross? Whose? 
Jesus' clothes. Why? Because they were nice. He wasn't a pauper. He wasn't poor. He had clothes that were so nice that the soldiers that put him on the cross were gambling for his clothes. It's like, wow. Wow. You know, because we think, oh, well, Jesus was poor. We need to be poor. No, Jesus was rich. Listen, if that guy needed money, he just went fishing. He said, hey, we got to pay taxes. I said, yeah, go fishing. Pulled up that fish. Oh, there's a gold coin in his mouth. Jesus never lacked. He always had enough. He laid his head where he wanted to. Wherever he wanted to. He was blessed when he left this life. But he gave everything he could away. He gave his life for us. You know, I, I think about that, that guy up in Oregon got shot five times saying, you're not coming in this classroom, buddy. And, and took, took that gunman down. Got shot five times. That guy gave for all those people. You're not taking anybody in this room Man, you got to go through me to get... Man, that's powerful. That is powerful. There's no greater love than to lay down your life for someone. And that's what that guy in Oregon did this week. He laid down his life for those people. Amen? What a powerful thing. What a blessing. But you don't hear a lot about that on the newswire. All you hear about is, well, we need to control guns. So I honored that and I went out and I bought another one this week. Come on. Guns aren't the problem. It's people that are the problem. The people need Jesus. The people need Jesus. That's what needs to happen. We need Jesus. We need to stop treasuring our finances and our money. And we need to start treasuring people. Amen. Building lives for the kingdom of God. We need to go out of our way to help somebody. Most of these guys that are, that are doing these killings, they've either been on some heavy medication or doing some crazy things. Or they love Allah. And Allah is not our God. Okay, because our God does not tell us to do those kind of things. Our God is full of love. Amen. He says, thou shalt not kill. But what does he say? He says, love God and love your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? Just look at the person next to you. Say, hi, neighbor. Don't get carried away now. Proverbs 15, 16. It says, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Amen? Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. You know, money doesn't have to be a problem for us. It doesn't have to be too much money doesn't have to be an issue for us. You see, I believe if we can learn to handle large sums of money, the Lord will give us large sums of money. Okay, but we have to be able to handle it. We have to be able to do what is right with it. Remember, Ezra, in Ezra chapter 8, verse 21, I talked about it last week, it tells us that we should seek the right way in fasting for all of our possessions. See, this is something we should even be fasting about. How do we handle our money? How do we handle our possessions? We should fast and seek the Lord about it. Amen? The next area of treasure, the treasure of recognition. How many of you like to be recognized? I like people to say, hey, there goes Ron King. Hi, Ron. Yeah, hey. You know, there goes Stephanie. She cuts hair. She cuts a mean hair. You know, I mean, we, we like a little bit of recognition. You know what? October is Pastor's Appreciation Month. You should recognize your pastors, amen? <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm I mean, you guys always bless me. I mean, Pastor Jesse, Pastor Joan, Pastor Maggie, amen? You should recognize your pastors. You should say, hey, you know, give them a card. Just, you don't have to put money if, unless you want to. But just let them know we love you. We appreciate what you do. See, because you don't know what Joan does. 
promise. You don't know what, what requirements I put on him. You don't know what I'm telling him that he's got to do. You don't know that he has to be here on Thursday night to do rehearsal. You don't know that he has to have the songs in by Tuesday for planning, etc. You don't know all that, that's got to happen during the week. You don't know that Marianne's got to have him entered into the computer for Thursday practice so that it's all ready to go. Marianne can't do it if Juwan don't do it. So then it's like, come on, people. See, you don't know all the behind-the-scenes stuff that happened. You don't know that Valerie's here five days a week right now giving away food, that every day she picks up a van load of food at 2 o'clock. You don't know that. You don't know that that lady, Sakura comes and helps her every day. You don't know about David, the guy from the Orthodox Church that's coming every day because he finds great joy in serving the Lord and he's helping her. See, there's just so many things that you don't know. You don't know what Mario goes through to, to keep this facility clean. It's tough. You know, we used to have three people cleaning this facility back in the day. Now we got one. And it's busier. Because, man, we have meetings all the time here. We're starting a, um, another church, Church of the Open Door in Norco. They're going to hold a prayer meeting in our chapel back in room one, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at noon. He's like, man, I'm talking. I said, hey, how you doing, brother? He says, I'm good. He goes, man, I'm really looking for a, a place, uh, you know, to rent, to, to uh, do a prayer meeting every day. I said, I got a place you can pray. He's like, well, how much? I don't want money. I want to give. Yeah. It's, if it's within your capacity, you give. So they're going to they're gonna pray here. And you know what I'm doing? I'm sowing seed. I'm sowing seed because I'm going to Kentucky in November to be with my kids. We're planning a church there. And they, their, their, their group is getting too big for the home. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make appointments with pastors so that when I go back there, I can meet with pastors and say, hey, I've been sowing seed in California for a church plant in Kentucky. What can you give me? I don't want to know what can I, what can I pay in rent. See, we've become so consumed with the money. You know, how much money are they paying? They're not going to pay me anything. No, this is to the glory of God. We have to have a house. He said, build me a house of prayer. To have a house filled with prayer, man. That's what we need, amen? That's what we need every day. We give. But recognition, you know, recognition. Oh, I can pray. Stand on the corner. Oh, glory to God. Man, I love to pray. You know, but I, man, I'm loving my closet right now. My closet is a fun place to pray right now. I'm loving my closet. I, I'm so happy in my closet. Delonda, Delonda looks at me the other day, man. I was, I was sitting at home, and it's 10 o'clock at night. Now, you know, I mean, because I, I study the Word all the time, and then I just taught a class for an hour and a half, and I'm home, and it's Tuesday night, and it's 10 o'clock at night, and I'm watching some stupid program on TV, and she jumps up, and she turns it off, and she says, don't you think you could do something better with your time? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I got my Bible. I got my Bible. I got some three-by-five cards. And I said, Lord, what scriptures do you want me to be praying? And I started just seeking the Lord, and I started writing out. I laid on my bed, and I, and I wrote out a bunch of scriptures. And I went in my closet, and I started pinning them to the wall. And then instead of just pinning them in and I, I prayed them through, and Delonda heard me in there shouting in my closet, and she come and she joined me, you know, because I can do better things with my time. Amen. Amen. You can do better things with your time. You, you, you can't say you don't have time to pray. It's what do you want? Where's your treasure at? If you're looking for the recognition, you know, you'll do it out in the public eye all the time. But if you're doing it, it's to the glory of God. You'll do it in secret. You're fasting. You'll look good when you fast. You won't be complaining, oh, I'm so hungry. When is this fast up? Man, everybody can skip a meal. Amen? You might get hungry, but everybody can skip a meal. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, it says, Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it for a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. We're doing things as under the Lord for that imperishable crown. Because the things of the treasures of this world, people will take. The treasures that we store up in heaven, no one will take. 
that will always be there for us. So when we're storing up treasure in heaven, we're doing it for that imperishable crown. And you know, prophecy is a good way to store up treasure. Minister to one another. When you come to church, don't just come to church, feed me, Pastor Ron. Come to church and say, hey, how can I bless somebody today? You know, I don't know if you've been doing the Proverbs reading, but there's one thing that's been jumping out at me in Proverbs that I'm highlighting in my Bible. I'm highlighting it when I read it on my, my um, iPad. I'm highlighting the scriptures because so much of the Proverbs is how we talk to each other. I'm amazed at how much scripture, today I read Proverbs 17, how much scripture talks about how we communicate with one another. How we, how we should be communicating. And I'm highlighting all these scriptures that have to do with your tongue. I got an award today from Version Bible Program. They, cause, because I highlighted ten scriptures in one, one chapter. They said, you get an award. I'm like, wow. They said, there's many awards awaiting for you as you continue to study the word of the Lord. I'm like, oh, I'm so encouraged today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight more. <laughs> I thought, this is great, man. I got an award. They sent me a little award, Pastor Jesse, online, you know, in my email. I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. I got an award because I studied the Word of God. You know, and you don't do it, though, for the recognition. You do it to the glory of God, amen? And then lastly, the treasure of power. Some people do things in this world to gain power. Not only for the recognition, but to gain the power. They're looking for a position of authority, and it becomes their treasure. This is when we serve to get something. We do something to get something. And this is when we're looking for something of our own. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, But we have this treasure. Everybody say treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure in us. Amen? The power of God in us. Not what we can do on our own strength, but what we can do by the power of God in us. Acts 1.8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that power is the power to do miracles. The excellence of the power of God is in us to do great things. It's not the power of ourselves. It, in, in, by ourselves, we have nothing. You know, James, I mean, John 15, it says, you know, by yourself, you can do nothing. But when you're attached to the vine, you can do anything. You know, when we're attached to the Lord, when our treasure is in the excellence of the power of God in us, we can do anything. All things are possible. Verse 8 in that chapter in Corinthians, it says, We're hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. Life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I speak. We also believe and therefore speak knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus. Amen. And will present, with, present us with you for all things. Everybody say all. all. All things are for your sakes. That grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. This passage says it all. Even though I feel like the world is crashing down on me, and you may feel that way today. You may feel like the, the world is too much, that life is overbearing, but he says, I have the excellence of the power of God in me so that I'm not in despair. 
Amen? I am not in despair. You know, I will not quit or run away because the tr of the treasure that is in me. The treasure I have because of the God that is in me. I will not quit, amen, no matter how hard life gets. I'm not quitting. I'm going to keep going to the glory of God. He said, all things are for your sakes. Everything is for your benefit. It's just finding the benefit in what you're going through. You know, I, I look at my mom. My mom's been going for the, uh, the treatments, the, what's that stuff, that she, chemotherapy. You know, she goes in, she's already done four, four sessions with seven shots in each session. And um, I said, Mom, you know, my brother went with her the first time, the first seven shots. So the next session, I'm like, Mom, I'll, I'll take you. No, I want to go alone. I'm like, oh. Oh, she's like, I'm going to drive myself. I'm, you know, there's so many people that are doing chemotherapy, and they just drive themselves. I don't want to be old and decrepit. I'm going to drive myself. My mom still doesn't know she's old yet. <laughs> she told me one time she got off a plane, and I picked her up. And she, I, I said, you're a little late. She goes, yeah, I was helping some old people. <laughs> I said, Mom, you are old. Come on, man, you're 75. She's like, nah, I ain't old. I'm like, okay. But my mom, she goes to chemotherapy. You know, and she sits and she talks to people about Jesus. She was in there the other day, Friday, getting a transfusion. And uh, she's in Hawaii on Saturday. She's crazy. Hallelujah. She's getting a transfusion on Friday. She was in the hospital most of the week. You know, just battling. She went home on Wednesday. I said, Mom, I'll pick you up from the hospital. She goes, no, your sister's coming. And she goes, and when your sister gets here, they'll wheel me down you know, in the wheelchair outside the hospital. Then I'm going to get up and I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive myself home. I'm like, okay, mom, that's, that's mom. But she was in there Friday getting a transfusion. And she heard this man say, well, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here today. And people start chiming in, you know. My mom says, oh, my son's a pastor. And this man says, well, why don't you call him up? We'll have service. And my mom says, you know, if I did, he'd come. You know, and she's just talking Jesus with these people. Just talking Jesus. Just building them up in the things of the Lord. Even in the midst of a trial. Even in the midst of having, you know, with blood hooked up to her arm, she's still shouting Jesus. Amen. She's still glorifying God. And that's what it is. You may be hard pressed on every side. Man, I met this, this lady in Peru. She came forward for, to me and Pastor Otto to pray for us, her and her son. She said, my son needs prayer. He He's, he's not feeling good. He doesn't feel like living. And um, he's standing right there. And he was a tall young man, 13 years old. He, he was at least my height. And they were both on crutches. They were both missing their right leg. Cut off at the hip right here. I'm like, what happened? I said, well, we were in a car accident. And we both lost our leg. And he's really struggling today. I need you to pray for him. Talk of a heart pressed. My mom says, Ron, you would not believe how many babies are coming to the cancer ward today. How many babies? I sit there and I see these parents bringing their babies in strollers to the cancer ward every time she's there. She says, it's just too much. We're hard pressed on every side, but yet we're not destroyed, amen? We're not giving up. We have the King. We have Jesus in us. We have the excellence of the power of God in us. We have this treasure in us, amen? And that's where we've got to be at. Even though I may be persecuted, I am not abandoned. Because my God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen? So no matter how I'm feeling, I know that by faith He is always with me. And no matter if I'm feeling persecuted, if I'm feeling run down, no, He is with me. I am not abandoned. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm sending my Holy Spirit to you who was with you and will now be in you. Why don't you stand to your feet right now? Come on, because we need the excellence of the power of God in us. Why don't you just come to the front right now and let's just begin to pray in the Spirit and just believe for the excellence of the power of God to fill us today overflowing that we would not feel so in despair, 
that we would not feel destroyed. We would not feel the destruction of the enemy. But the treasure that we have inside of us, the power of God inside of us, would come alive in us today. That it would be manifested in our life. That when people look at you, they see Jesus. That when people look on you, they don't see the despair you're in. They don't see the destruction of the enemy. They see the power of God. They see the power of God in you. Come on. Begin to lift your voices. Begin to just pray in the Spirit. Lord, we glorify you, Father God. And we pray for just the filling today. That, Lord, that you fill us today. Fill us overflowing today, Lord. Yay. Let it rain down. Let your Spirit come, Father God. And be poured out upon us, Father. Yeah, you set us... Lord, upon all flesh, you pour your spirit. I pray you pour out on us. Yes. Let it rain, God. Let it rain down, Father. The excellence of the power of God would be in us. Help me, brother. Uh, somebody else, get ushers up here. Yes. Let it rain, God. Let it rain. Oh, pour out, Father God. Fill your people. Fill us today, Father God. Yea, that the excess would be in the power of God in us. Not of ourselves, Lord, but of you. Lord, fill us today. Fill us overflowing, Father. Come on, Juan. Yea, somebody that was so not in the kid in the Yea, let it rain, God. Yea, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. In the name of Jesus, let it flow, God. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, Lord. Yes, somebody that was so not in the let it rain down, God. Let it rain down. Father, fill them. Fill them today, Lord Jesus. Overflowing and abundantly, Father God. Let it rain, Father. Let it rain. Lord, just fill them today. Lord, the presence, the power of God. In the name of Jesus, let it rain down on them, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that you be glorified, Father. That you be glorified, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let it rain, God. Let it rain, God. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, somebody did yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Praise you, Father. Let it rain. Let it rain, God. Let it rain, God. Yeah, let it rain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. The excellence of the power of God.
let it flow, Father. Let it flow. Just fill Fill them, Lord. Yeah. Oh, shut that up. Yeah. Fill. Yeah. Somebody to mess up. Yeah. Fill her, Lord. Fill her overflowing, Father. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. Yeah. You break off every weight, Lord. Every weight, Lord. Yeah, we give you glory today, Lord. We give you glory today, Lord. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just fill, Lord. Fill, Lord. Lord, Lord. Yeah, let it rain down, Lord. Let it rain down, Lord. Yeah, fill them overflowing, Father. Yeah. Let it flow, God. Yeah, somebody in the Let it rain, God. Let it rain. Let it rain, Father. Yeah. Oh, somebody that we need to get. Your Lord, you're our provider, Lord. Hallelujah. Our treasures in heaven. Our treasures, the excellence of the power of God. Yeah, just fill, Lord. Fill my soul, Lord. Yeah. Let it rain down on her, Father. Come on, let the love of the Father just come and fill her today, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, let it flow, God. Let it flow, God. Yeah. Let it flow. Heal. Heal. Yeah. Touch my sister, Lord. And her mama, Father God. Yeah, there's a heritage here in the Lord. I pray that life into the heritage down to your kids. I pray that that heritage will be passed down generation to generation. Yeah, it's so God in the Let it flow, God. Let it flow. Let there be a great awakening in this family line, Father. There are many sons and daughters, Father. Many. Touch this family, Father. The excellence may be of the power of God. Yeah, just touch. Touch. Just fill my sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we do. We just surrender it all to you. We thank you, Lord, for the treasure of the excellence of the power of God in us. That, Lord, that no matter what we are going through, we can overcome. Jesus, you overcame the world so that we could overcome. And I pray, Lord, just your strength, that power, be alive inside of each one of us today, Father God. That, Lord, that we not give in to the things the world is throwing at us. But, Lord, we stay in that position of being surrendered to you. To bring in glory to your name. And I pray, Father God, that the excellence of the power of God would begin to move out through us in our lives, Father. That it would become evident, Lord. Lord, that even when we're going through things, you said they're for our benefit. Lord, there are, there are diseases that are happening that, Lord, uh, we can't see the benefit in it. But, Lord, the excellence of the power of God in us makes us look for the benefit. And I pray that, Lord, as people are in battles, that, Lord, that you would give us strength to overcome, strength to glorify you in the midst of it, that people would look upon the people of God and say, I know you're in a battle, but you're not, you're not moved. Lord, your joy be our strength. Cover and protect every person here today, Lord. Let healing be their portion. I pray blessing on them today, Father. Lord, that we would glorify you in what we say and what we do. In Jesus' name.